Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we are getting back into the Venom series, where like we saw, Natasha Romanoff is stepping in, because the secret no-name organization that we were introduced to in issue 23, it goes much deeper than Dylan and Brent think. And with Natasha now having a symbiote of her own, we begin to see some of the unique ways that they work together. So with that said, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so jumping back in, we continue the story from issue 23, where a guy who calls himself No One kidnapped an Alchemax employee just to kill the guy slowly on a live broadcast while giving Alchemax the ultimatum, either come forward with the truth or stay silent with this man's blood in your hands, as this demonstration was set to be the first of many and like we saw, Bren Waters, the new host of the Toxin Symbiote, he went to Dylan to get his help. So they suited up in their symbiotes and teamed up, only to find out that no one was also taking the children of Alchemax employees as leverage to draw them out, which was a close call at the time, because they got these children out of this building which was wired to explode that no one set off not long after they showed up. And in response to the explosion and the fire, Alchemax quickly jumped on it, trying to cover it up, which in a lot of ways just proves that they're desperately trying to hide something. And after this, the last thing we saw was Natasha Romanoff making her way here the next morning after seeing the broadcast. And she knew when she saw it that she wasn't going to get here before it was too late. But also, while she was here checking out the place, this is where we saw her bond with the new symbiote. And since then, she's found this symbiote to be very useful in helping her out since she's been following the bloody trail of this nameless group for months. And when we come back, we find her meeting with Keith Walken, who she's known for 10 years. They were friends at one point. So she meets with him in hopes of getting information to shut this group down, only to find out that Keith is one of them. But Natasha's pretty aware of the risk of asking Keith for this information since they haven't spoken in some time. So she was almost certain that if he didn't cooperate, then this was a trap. Because much like the guy doing the broadcast calling himself no one, the other members of this organization, and Keith here included, they've all lost someone for a meaningless reason. And this group will do anything to make those who they believe are responsible, accountable. But nonetheless, with Keith trying to set up Romanoff, much to his surprise, she's got a symbiote, which he finds out as the symbiote crawls up his legs like a ton of little spiders, disarming him and wrapping around him, with poor Keith being so terrified that he can't even scream, as the symbiote jumps in his mouth, up his nose, in his ears, eating his brain. So Natasha lets her new symbiote know that he can't just go around killing people at will, which is not to say that she had a problem with what just happened now, because that was self-defense. But also she's aware that this symbiote is young, it's new. So she makes sure to tell it that's not the normal way of handling things. And as the symbiote returns to her, it brings along with it Keith's memories, which it stole from him while wrapping around him and eating his brain, which initially Natasha finds to be super surprising. But it's also very useful you know, with her being a spy and everything. So from here, she leaves the body and she asks her symbiote if it's found its way into the hive that it's been talking about. And it tells her no, so she tells it to keep looking because they have to find Venom before Alchemax does. And just after this, we head over to Dylan, who's got the bills piling up, cause you know, no dad around. But fortunately, his cell phone is still working. Cause it's here where he gets a call from Bren, who's calling to warn him that Alchemax is coming for him because No Name is at it again, and Alchemax believes that Dylan's involved. So Dylan rushes to leave home, but when he tries to suit up as Venom, the Venom symbiote is not responding. And right away we find out that's because right now inside the hive, Venom and Toxin realize that someone else is in there with them, moving around in the shadows from one corner over to the next, and they're not sure if it's one person who's everywhere or if it's a number of intruders. And it isn't long before this person just steps out in front of Venom and Toxin, revealing themselves to be Widow, Natasha's new symbiote who's been looking for Venom for a little while now. And I gotta say, I'm digging the new look, cause though right here, this is just the symbiote who's come to the hive, it's also giving a full preview of how Natasha looks once she's suited up, which we haven't gotten yet officially in the series. And I mean, we talked about it a couple months ago, back when we talked about issue 23, which gave us the cliffhanger of Widow bonding with the symbiote for the first time. And I will say, even though it's giving a bit of the Peter Parker, Spider-Man dark suit vibes, to me, this is kind of the look that a Widow symbiote should have, because it stays subtle, but at the same time, you can tell who it is. 
But right now, while all the symbiotes are having their meeting in Venom's hive, Dylan is ducking gunshots and running for his life while calling out for Venom and still getting no response, which eventually leads to Dylan running up to the roof and taking a leap of faith while screaming Venom's name in his mind, hoping that the symbiote will come out because right now Dylan's run out of options. But fortunately, Venom finally comes out, giving Dylan a bit of an Iron Man moment here, suiting him up just in the nick of time so they can head out and physically meet up with Widow and Toxin. Because right now, when we head over to Romanoff, we find that she's going through the memories of the late Keith Walken. Whereas it turns out, Keith works for the NSA, or better yet, worked for the NSA. But because he was a member of this secret group, it's said that he's operating as more of an actor who's wearing a mask and playing the role of Keith Walken. Though on the inside, much like the other members of this secret group, he's no one. And that's how this nameless group operates. They recruit others who lost someone in a meaningless way, and once they're in, they're no one. And from there, they all contribute by using their real names, real lives, their jobs or careers or connections to do whatever the nameless group needs them to do. And it's the inverse for their hostages. Whenever they kidnap someone, they no longer have a name and they just call them no one. And now with Natasha going through these memories, the Widow symbiote's also helping her to make sure that she doesn't get lost in them so she can continue to distinguish his mind from her own without falling into the grief or the other emotions that come along with Keith's memories. And after searching these memories for some time, Natasha comes back out because Venom's here. And as she wakes up, she says, I'll get the cookies. And right away, Venom's like, wait, there's, there's cookies? And I mean, of course, for Natasha, it was just a figure of speech. But you know, symbiotes love chocolate because for them, it's the next best thing to eating brains. But as Venom steps into the window, Romanov asks where's Toxin, so Dylan shows himself as he tells her that Toxin's on the way. And it's kind of surprising for her because she didn't expect the kid to step out of Venom because she's met Venom before and Venom knows who she is and she knows that Dylan is Eddie's son. But she didn't know that Dylan had taken over as Venom, let alone what happened to Eddie at that motel. So she asks Dylan, where's his father? And Dylan just responds, not here, with quite a bit of resentment for Eddie because Dylan's dealing with a whole lot by himself. So again, we're seeing his anxiety and fear turn into anger and all point at his father, who Dylan needs right now. And Eddie's not here. But Romanoff doesn't pick this up because also Dylan's walking away from her with his back turned for the most part while she's telling him about her experience with this new symbiote and how she didn't see the appeal at first to having one. But now she does because it's complete trust, which is really rare for someone in her line of work. And as Dylan turns to the side, she sees the cut on his face, but he just tells her that it's nothing. And he lets her know about Alchemax coming to his home because they believe that he's this no-name character. And Romanoff tells him that she knows, and Alchemax will probably figure that out when it's way too late. But from here, she just cuts straight to it with Dylan because she tells him she was looking for Venom. She didn't know she was going to wind up with him. So right now, she needs him to tell her that he's up for this. So Dylan lets her know, we are are Venom. If you need Venom, you're stuck with me, but I haven't agreed to help you with anything. I don't even know what this is. Because also, Dylan doesn't think that Romanoff is a good host for this newborn symbiote. But right in the middle of their conversation, the TV switches from the news to another broadcast from no one, who's sending out his next message while showing his new hostage. And when we go over to Bren, he sees the same thing on his TV because it's broadcasting on every channel. And for a moment, Bren freezes up because no one's new hostage is a kid which now has Bren thinking of those other kids and how the next hostage was supposed to be him. And this whole time, Toxin is telling Bren that they need to leave. They need to meet up with Venom. But by the time Bren makes his way outside, they're surrounded. And when we go back to Natasha and Dylan, she fills him in on more of the details, letting him know that a year ago, Alchemax had a massive fire at one of their facilities where a number of people died and a substance called K-43 leaked into the water supply. And over the following months, people began to get sick, but Alchemax declined any wrongdoing, leaving the families left without answers or support. And right now, this boy that No Name is holding hostage, he's in a room with highly concentrated K-43. It might take a few hours, but it will kill him, unless Alchemax takes responsibility and admits to what they've done. But Dylan doesn't fully understand who No Name is, so Natasha breaks it down for him. And she tells him it's people who've lost someone in meaningless ways. The only way to find meaning is to hold those responsible accountable. They're everywhere. They work for the government. They could be your neighbor. They could be anyone. But before Natasha gets to finish, she senses something. And she asks Dylan, can you feel that? And Dylan tells her it's her symbiote sense. 
which in the past has been really more of a hive connection thing because right now they can sense that Toxin's in trouble. So Dylan lets Natasha know that he can find him, which then has her curious to know if Dylan could find her the same way. And he tells her yes, but Toxin's their grandchild, which makes it complicated. And that's putting it modestly because technically Venom could find any symbiote, but there are exceptions like its own offspring because of their inherent and unique abilities. And then you have the case of a symbiote leaves its hive, like Venom did to know before the conclusion of King and Black, which was similar to how Carnage also left Venom's hive, which was either in absolute carnage or extreme carnage when we talked about it last, so yeah, it can definitely get complicated. And as it stands right now, we still haven't been told if the Widow symbiote is an offspring of Venom or Toxin, or if that's another twist that's coming down the line. All we're told here is that he can find Widow if he needs to. And right now he lets her know that he's communicated with the other members of his hive and they're on their way to help. And as they go, he asks Widow if she's with them and she says yes. And next, when we go back to Bren and Toxin, back at Bren's home with them being surrounded, they choose to fight. But as they do, something's wrong, something's off. Because usually when Toxin engages in a fight, the chemical scent of fear fills the air as soon as someone sees him. But right now, that's not happening. And the reason why is because these guys, they're not afraid. And as it turns out, these weapons were made to take on Toxin. So they open fire, letting off a combination of sonics and heat, which together make the symbiote feel like it's melting from the inside. So out of concern for Bren's safety, it lets him go. Cause if Toxin continues to hold on, Bren could be hurt. And as soon as one of these guys sees the opportunity, he runs in and snatches up Bren. And the last thing that Bren hears Toxin say is don't look back. And as this guy is pulling Bren away, he tells him, Bren Waters, that was your name. Now you are no one because as it turns out these guys are a part of the no name organization and so now real quick i want to give a special shout out to all the patrons thank you guys for all of your support and for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel i got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill but that'll do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one all right later